This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. Today I'm continuing the Monster Disney Princess series and I'm corrupting Snow White. Or should I say, Snow Fright. So my idea for this sculpt was that Snow White bit the apple, but instead of killing her or putting her into that sleeping death, it actually turned her into this crazy monster. And she's a pretty cool sculpt, and I hope you enjoy watching the process of me making her. And then before we get started, the seamstress plush is back for a very limited time. This is her last hurrah, and if you missed her the first round, now is your chance to get her before she is actually gone forever. I am signing these, and they are available right now at aceofclay.com. The link is in the description box below. Grab her before she's gone forever. Now let's make Snow Fright. Okay, for this project I'm going to start with Snow Fright's head. This is going to be the focal point of the piece and I want to design her body around it. She's going to be very monstrous looking, but I want to be sure she still looks like herself, not just like a crazy, unrecognizable monster with a black wig on. I want her design to be thoughtful. And I will be using some Super Sculpey Living Doll for her. After adding that over some aluminum foil, you see I have started carving out her features. Always want to block out the shape and location of everything before going into any detail. This will make sure your piece doesn't look wonky when it's done because everything will be in the right spot. The look I'm going for is sort of a mid-transformation. As I mentioned in the intro, the apple didn't kill her, it turned her into a monster. And she probably bit the evil queen's head off after that. But this sculpture will depict a stage of that transformation. So technically, there's actually a step after this where she ends up even more monstrous. Sculpting this step will allow her to look more like herself. But with that being said, as you can see, she's going to have a huge gaping mouth, big wide eyes that will be rolling into the back of her head, and lots of tiny sharp teeth. One thing that I wanted to make sure to get right is her youthful appearance. Normally with a monster sculpt, I can add a bunch of wrinkles and textures that will disguise the surface and add to that scary factor. But in this case, I want her skin to look pretty normal around the grotesque, exaggerated features I'm adding. There, I just added her little button nose. Who says monsters can't have a cute button nose? For some added interest and to make her expression more dynamic, I'm making her mouth asymmetrical where it is wider on one side. To sell this look, the gum line still needs to be level with the rest of her skull, but the mouth will be opening around it asymmetrically. And here, I can confidently say that we are at the end of the ugly stage. The ugly stage is that stage in your sculpt where you don't like what it looks like, but instead of smashing it and starting over, you trust the process and keep going. Patience is key. Patience and soft, gentle clay shaping. Here I'm adding some thin, angry brows with some delicate, tapered snakes of clay. This will make her look a lot angrier, naturally. And here we go, the light at the end of the tunnel is closer than ever and it's time to give her some teeth. Off camera I rolled out a bunch of tiny pokey teeth out of flexible cos clay and pre-baked them and I'm pressing them into her gums with some tweezers after adding some bacon bond. After carefully adding all of her top teeth, I forgot to make her a tongue, so I'm doing that now and texturing it with this brush, and I'm going to stick it in her mouth with more Bacon Bond. Now I'm going to fill in the rest of her gums with more teeth. And I'm just popping on some veins really quick, and... Finishing some things up, gonna give her some ears, even though these get covered by her hair later on, but it's okay. Now I just wanna texture her skin with a brush and move on to the body. 
I've assembled her armature with some aluminum wire, and I've decided she's going to have a really long neck. After positioning her legs, let's fill them in with some aluminum foil and top everything off with some ultralight and get this in the oven. After she's baked, I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice healthy layer of clay on top of everything, and then we can start working on the details, my favorite part. And of course, for her dress, we have to add some stretch marks to the fabric so it looks like it's pulling in the direction of her legs. Going to focus a lot of these snakes off the tip of her knee and bring them down to the rest of the dress. Just wanna follow this arrangement and let it influence where I place the other snakes. With the kind of dress this is, we want it to look like there are legs underneath. We never want to lose them. This is gonna sell the pose and make her look more dynamic. And here I'm having a deep conversation with someone. All right, now I'm gonna start working on the arms and we're gonna take a quick break to talk about our sponsor. All right, now before we get into the rest of the video, let's take a second to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're a big business, a small business, a freelance designer, or sculptor like me, Squarespace has everything you need to showcase your brand, sell your products, and more. I've been using Squarespace for over three years now, even before they started sponsoring me, and I could not be happier with my experience. Their products are so streamlined and so easy to use that managing my website, aceofclay.com, is truly a breeze. Some of my favorite features include the portfolios and galleries in my line of work, I have to show everything that I make to the world and Squarespace's beautiful portfolios allow me to do just that. I even opened my online store where I sell stickers, posters, even original sculpts and Squarespace makes everything so easy. I can track my inventory, even print shipping labels. I get notifications when I get a sale and everything I need is right there in the platform. You can even sell digital downloads. They really have everything you need to start selling online. And at this day and age, if you're an online business, you've got to have a social media presence and Squarespace allows you to integrate all your social media into any page of your website. So if everything I said sounds good, head on over to squarespace.com, start a free trial, and when you're ready to go live, go to squarespace.com slash aceofclay to save 10% on your purchase of a website or domain using my code aceofclay. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video, now back to our sculpture. All right, let's finish up those arms and then we can work our way up to the neck. She's gonna have a really long snake-like neck and I'm going to make it out of cosplay so I can pose it however I want after she's baked. And yes, I realize this is similar to the teacher from Little Nightmares, but I was actually inspired by Beetlejuice. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to the neck and make it look like a sort of warty worm. Now let's get her neckline on with a blended snake of clay and then we'll move on to her poofy sleeves. Now we're going to finish off her top with some piping and her high white collar. And we're gonna finish off her body, of course, with some hands. And for the last step, we're gonna make her a little apple with a bite taken out of it. After pre-baking her head, let's add some hair. Believe it or not, I'm gonna sculpt her hair out of ultralight. This is not for the faint of heart. I'm using ultralight because I don't wanna make her head too heavy for her neck. Ultralight is a very difficult to detail sculpt with. It's phenomenal for armature and bulking, but when it comes to sculpting with it, it can be a mess if you're not patient. It's very unforgiving and you have to be super gentle with every movement. You also have to pretty much work in slow motion. So again, be patient. So in this process, I figured out the key to not making Snow White's hair look like a founding father was the two pieces in the front. After adding these, she is undoubtedly Snow White or Snow Fright. Now let's go on and add some texture. Thank you. 
And of course, we can't forget her little headband with the bow. Now let's attach her head with some bacon bond and get her in the oven. Now after a quick inspection, Snow Fright is ready for paint. I'm using War Paints by Army Painter to paint the entire thing. Let's start with the inside of her mouth and then go on to her skin. After getting my base colors down, it's time to go in with a wash to get in all the nooks and crannies and we can wipe off the excess. Now let's go in with some detail painting. I want her eyes to be rolled back into her head. Thought this was a nice effect. Give her her nice big brown eyes. And let's finish them off with some pretty eyelashes. And we're gonna draw on some thin, angry eyebrows. Now let's get those teeth painted. After the face and everything is done, let's go in and paint the rest of her, starting with her hair. This really made her look like herself. <laughs> Now for the final touches, we're going to glaze her eyes, mouth, and teeth with some Americana Triple Thick Varnish. Get nice and glossy. And let's stick the apple in her hand. Now say it with me. And she's done! Snow Fright is complete. Let me know what you think of her in the comments. I'm so happy with how this sculpture turned out. She looks even better than I pictured her, and I think she's just a fun little piece. Maybe I'll sell her one of these days. But I love that her neck is cosplay and I can reposition it if I want. Overall, I really like her. I like her bold colors. You could definitely tell that this is Snow White. Love her little bitten apple and all that. I think she's cool. Snow Fright, 
lots of fun. Which Disney princess should I corrupt next? Let me know in the comments, and of course, let me know what you think of her, and as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.